Hello everyone. So we are at a really incredible turning point energetically. My guides are calling it the precipice of change. We, I want to dive in to talk about what all of that means, what's ahead for us, how to handle these energies and where to draw our focus and the territory that we're headed into. So let's dive in. Do you feel, feel, do you feel the light? Do you feel the light? light, light? Okay, before we get started, how do you guys like my new intro song? Pretty cool, huh? Um, I had that created by this wonderful soul. His name is Chris Ianetti, and he's a music producer and creative extraordinaire and if you're interested and you're like man I'd love to have a little sound bite or some sort of musical accompaniment to what I do in your projects his information is below and you can hit him up and he can make some cool tunes and sounds for you. The other thing I want to mention real quick is Monday September 30th I am offering an eclipse portal meditation and a channeled message beforehand. Uh, we're at a really potent moment in time where I really feel like these eclipses are helping us to just catapult into this next level and I want to bring forward information for you that's going to help you step into this next level and this new stage and really that heart space and how to operate from that space and what's there for you and how to move forward. So if you're interested, that information is below as well. That's this Monday, September 30th. It's only $11 and it's at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. So if you can make it, I hope to see you there. Okay, so let's get into it. The first thing that my guides were showing me was this image of a person on an island, this really tiny island where there's all these trees and there's only like a little bit of sand and then the water just keeps drawing in closer and closer. And it's like, oh my gosh, how do I get off this island? What do I do? I've been stuck in this tiny little space for so long. I'm ready to like go out in the world, but I don't know what to do. The water is building up. And the water just felt like this invitation. We're going to talk a lot about water. but. It felt like we've been in this hibernation mode, we've been releasing, we've been figuring out, you know, deeper parts of ourselves and how to step into them more. And the water feels like our intuition. It feels like the next level, the next step. And it felt like it's drawing closer and closer. I think a lot of us had have shed so many parts of our lives, whether that's uh, friends or relationships. Um, I think a lot of us have probably left those because they don't resonate anymore or we don't talk to as many people. Um, a big one is jobs or careers. I think a lot of us have left those almost cold turkey because our soul just cannot connect to the frequency of those industries anymore. And we know there's something else, but we've been sitting in this hibernation and this lag time of, well, what's next? This limbo. And it feels like this, the answer to that is quickly approaching. And we know what the answer is, I think, deep within us, but we may be too scared to jump into it. And that's what the water is. The water is our intuition. It's our own self-worth. It's this deeper knowing of, I'm supposed to follow my own path now. And it's getting so close. And the space that we've been in has been feeling so tight and like we're ready to expand. And my guide said, let's just dive in. It's time to leave this little island that we have found ourselves on where we just have been kind of keeping to ourselves. We haven't been putting ourselves out in the world that much. It's time to fully dive in now and start honoring what our heart wants, what our intuition is telling us. So if you have left a job or a living location or are about to, it's like the thing that you are wanting to do, even if it's just a small nugget of an idea, it's time to act on it. And this is this is what we're being fed into. It's like, you know, intuition or bust. <laughs> you know, if we don't fully give into what's coming through for us and letting that lead us and letting that build our life out from this point, then we are going to find ourselves still stuck on this little island or island hopping hoping that one of them will feel like home and it never will. So 
this is what we're being pulled into. And I really feel like through this eclipse doorway, we are being ushered into releasing these final remnants of uh, this used to be uh, what I would fall into, like, you know, this type of work or these types of friends or, um, you know, a living location like this. What I, Again, whatever it is, uh, eating habits. It's like, I'm, I'm trusting my intuition now and I'm letting that provide for me abundantly and create my path. There's no more shutting ourselves out from the world. We didn't come here to be recluses and be like, I can't stand being around people. It's time to fully own our power and that power is in our intuition. We're balancing the masculine and the feminine and what that looks like is I'm going to dive deep into my meditation. I'm going to receive answers from my heart. I'm going to set up that practice for myself. That's the water aspect. That's where I receive. That's where I'm letting myself daydream and expand out and imagine because all of that is real. We're entering into that energy and making that imagination and daydream energy our new reality. This isn't something we're just sitting on. It's something that is now our operating system. The big word that my guides gave me is possibility. We are starting to lean into the possibility of what can be as opposed to clinging to potential. And there's a huge difference between these words. I feel like potential is a lower frequency. You know, it's like when you're in a relationship with somebody and um, you keep staying in it even though you know it's wrong for you, but you're like, I see the potential in this person and what they could be. And you keep trying to bring out the potential in them, but they're not ready for it. We're done clinging to potential. Possibility is a higher frequency. It is, I'm stepping into my full self-worth and my full power, and that matches me up with other people, other opportunities that are in their full power and we start creating this possibility as a freaking reality. So we want to start leaning in possibility. That's where it's like I'm in meditation or I'm, you know, sitting out on my front porch and I'm just imagining this idea of like, what if I created this thing? It's like, yes, what if you did? What if you started taking steps, even though you don't know all of them yet to get there? It's time. We are being pulled into the magic of possibility. This is where we are landing on the other side of this eclipse portal. And in this, we are going to be operating so much more from the heart than we are from the mind. And it's going to be this balance of going into the intuition, the daydream, the imagination, the receiving, and then putting that into action. Okay, now I'm going to take these steps that I received. I'm going to put them into action. Okay, I'm going to start talking to the right people about what I'm wanting. And let's see how things can start fitting together. Oh, okay, I got this intuition about this thing that wants to be created. I don't know my first step yet. Well, let me get into the frequency of it. And I'm going to take action by doing things that I love, that make me happy, by um, going out in nature and like taking this physical action that puts you in this frequency so that then you can receive more of the download about how to move forward. We are operating not from this blind possibility, but from this open possibility of I know this certain possibility of I know this is where I'm headed. So I'm going to keep moving in this direction no matter what. And this doesn't mean like don't you can't rest or anything. It's not this like trudging forward. It's like, okay, I'm receiving, I'm resting, I'm letting these things integrate. And then I'm going to take my action. And I take a little bit of action, then I come back to this other place. And this is the yin and the yang, the masculine and the feminine. And we're marrying them together and making this beautiful cocktail of energy and intuition and possibility. And we're just drinking it down and we're feeling good. <laughs> the more we step into our intuition and trust it and follow it and start pulling this old world out of us even more, the more that these intuitive hits that we're getting become physical, the more we're going to see the proof in the pudding, you know, of following what our heart is telling us. 
this is how we are the way showers. This is how we are also the light workers. We're showing people a new way of operating and we have to do it first. We have to trust in ourselves first. This isn't like I'm going to go intervene in people's business and tell them how to do it. No, no, no. It's I'm going to evolve myself and then they're going to witness the energy of it and then they're going to be able to do it themselves. Again, we're showing people what's possible. So we have to be able to believe that and hold it within ourselves. This is the precipice of change. When we start leaning into that possibility, when we start believing the intuition we've been getting, whether it feels freaking scary or not, whether it's like, wow, it's really like exhausting my bank account, <laughs> but I'm going to trust that I'm going to be provided for no matter what. It's like, I'm going to do it. This is how we open up brand new worlds and this is how we bring in that change. Okay, so I want to talk about water really quick. Water is not only healing and cleansing, but it is activating, rejuvenating. The molecules in it hold so much memory and power and uh, initiation for us. And while yes, it would be wonderful to go be in like live bodies of water and allow that to um, serve us, it's, the, the weather is getting colder for a lot of us. So use water where you can. Um, my guides were telling me, it, even if you don't have a bathtub, like you can sit in a bathtub and let that water like activate you. But if you ha just have a shower, like set the intention of that water pouring over you and activating your intuition, activating the memory that your soul brought with it and say, okay, in this shower, I want it to activate like what's my next step or what's the possibility I'm supposed to start stepping into. And in the next few days, you're going to start to notice things coming forward for you, synchronicities, opportunities, ideas. And when you set that intention with the water, the water is going to soak in and open up these parts of you to start coming forward. So with that, my guides were showing me like this river that's super muddy, like this muddy water where you can't see to the bottom. And they were making me feel like, oh, okay, they put fluoride in the water. They've done all this stuff to our water. Our water is basically poisoned. And it's like, of course it is. You know, and I think we've all heard this. They put fluoride in the water because it calcifies the pineal gland. But it's so much more than that. It's like when we are in this poisonous water, it can't wake up the molecules in our body. It can't um, activate us in this way to help us remember and step into this possibility. So a lot of our water is being cleaned. Um, even if you're taking a shower and you don't have a filter on it, they're like, it's okay. The water is still live. It's running, it's moving, and it has its molecules in it. But they're like, this is what the, you know, <laughs> the darker entities on the planet have tried to do. They don't want us to have access to water, not just because it's hydrating, it's activating. That's the biggest thing. When we have water in our system, when we drink it and um, we, we can set intention with it, when it's clean water especially, it's like, it's so spiritual and magical for us. So that's also why it's really important when we go through these solar flares or we have a big clearing or cleansing and we release a lot of stuff for us to drink water because that water is going to reactivate our cells and the memory in our body of who we truly are. It's going to help bring us back online even more. So find those clean resources of water as much as you can. And even just sitting by water, it's like, you know, the water molecules, they turn into like gaseous content and um, it, it's like a breeze over a pond or a lake or something. You're breathing in that water and you're, you're getting the essence of what you need from it. Even if you go into meditation and you imagine yourself sinking into like this natural pool of water and give yourself a cleansing and an activation from it, it's going to help wake up the cells. Your body isn't going to know any different. It's going to think it's in this like natural spring of water. So you can do all of this. Water is so powerful. It represents the feminine. It is 
um, our intuition and our flow about giving and receiving, it was showing me the tides where it's like the tide comes in and it's this invitation to step into the water and then it pulls you into its depths and you get to sink into the water and open yourself up and expand and water helps you expand and it helps you um, step more into the possibility of you and receive it like holds you in this way and creates this flow in your body so even just imagining like being in that tide that back and forth that giving and that receiving this water is so potent and so important for us right now so be sure to drink plenty of water and if you're someone who likes to like activate it or set intention with your water absolutely do that it can help you open things up inside of you. So if you're like, man, I really wanna know how to heal my digestive issues or something, ask the water to bring that memory on board and wake it up in your body so that it can start pulling that frequency towards you about how to heal that or how do I start creating this project that I want for New Earth? It's like, or even just, you know, how can I, <laughs> how can I just start receiving my intuition more? Anything, the water is going to help you do that. It helps open us up, just like the breath. So work with water and see how that goes. Maybe you already do, and you can leave a comment below and see how water has helped you open up. It's that intuitive feminine frequency, and it's amazing. The other thing I was being told, um, and it doesn't seem like this is like forever, but uh, right now, especially through the end of the year, it feels like... Uh, a good thing that we could do to help us as well is to meditate where we sleep. So if you have a meditation practice, uh, or even if you just do it once a week or something, if you meditate like on the side of the bed where you sleep, I recommend doing it sitting up, not laying down. So it's like you're bringing the energy to where you sleep of what you're meditating on. Or if you channel, like you can, you can sit on the bed there and channel. And it's like you're building like this energy force field where you sleep so that when you go to sleep, you will start pulling in that energy in your dreams and you'll receive more and you'll get to integrate it more into your body while you sleep. Uh, it feels like a really powerful like cycle that gets to happen if you meditate where you sleep and the energy gets to work itself more and work deeper into your system and you'll receive more answers and clarity and guidance in your dreams like expanding on what you've been meditating on. So this precipice of change is really about leaning into this intuitive side. It's time to dive in. And when we do that, our whole world starts to shift. I think we have choice points right now that are happening. We can choose to keep focusing on What's going on in the world? What's going on with the, you know, political scene? What's going on with the celebrity scene? My guides came through and said, this is all distraction. All of it. They want you to focus on this dumb shit. <laughs> Sorry, that's what it is. So that you don't focus on you and your possibility that's at hand. So you don't trust your intuition. I feel like what's happening right now, a lot of stuff that's coming out, there's been, you know, stuff with celebrities that have been coming out. They were telling me that this is uh, part of like a ploy, that that was like the scapegoat or their fall guy for, um, I think you know probably who I'm talking about in the music business. Um, that was like their fall guy. It was like, let's make, let's sell him out and expose him. And it just feels like in the political arena, there are plenty of people that were involved in that scene, but they're like... Uh, in, a, in a different way or they had their own kind of involvement in that sort of thing and um, it feels like they want us to focus over here because there are portions of this mm, uh, election that are being fixed and manipulated and so also it feels like when they have these issues come out then they can be like we're going to address this um, like it's like they're better by comparison or they, they can have something to talk about that they're going to do something about it, but it's like they're the ones that started it. <laughs> it's like they're involved in it too. It's all distraction. It's all to like try and make them look better for the powers that be or are not going to be any much, much longer. But um, 
it just feels like don't fall for any of it. We can't fall for it. We have to focus right now. This is one of the biggest things. Focus on what our heart is pulling us towards. Focus on what we're driving towards to create. Focus on our intuition and the action we need to take towards that. And let the collective figure all this other stuff out. It's just like this massive change that feels like is really coming towards the end of this year. I like a wake up call realization for people like wait what the f is happening it's like um and we're just gonna be like yeah i knew that we don't have to know all the details of it we don't have to like know all of the disclosure of everything we already know we can already feel it in our energy it doesn't have to be all this stuff of like yeah finally it's coming out it's like yeah it's going to but like at the same time, I don't think every single thing is going to, but I do think enough will just to wake people up and shift. And I think that's going to start really happening towards the end of this year. And they're making me feel like we have to get out of that chaos. We have to stop focusing on it. We have to stop needing it to happen and, and letting it draw us in. This is the choice point we're at. If we keep focusing on that dumb shit, it, the distraction, it pulls us into this like lower echelon or a lower timeline. And I feel like when we focus on the possibility and and step into that, it's this higher plane that we get to be on. It's like that track to new earth. So we have a choice. You can you can try to stay on your little island and, and not offer more of who you are, not dive into your intuition and, and, and island hop and, and hope that one of them will just work out. Or you can say, screw it, I'm going to dive into the water. I'm going to really just block out all of this crap from the external world. And I'm going to focus on me and my highest and what I'm bringing and what I'm here to do and move forward with. So it's like we have, to, I see so many people in the spiritual world being obsessed with like, who's going to win? Who's going to win the election? Who's What's going to be this? And it's just like, who cares? It, it, it's, it, it's not, I don't think that's really for us right now. It's for the people who have not woken up yet. And I don't mean this in, um, you know, like a, we're better or anything, some sort of way, but it's more like we should know better. We should know that when we put our focus on things, it accelerates it, it expands it, it creates more of it. So when we put our focus on this possibility and the breadth of what we can bring to the world from our soul and our highest light, it's going to expand and accelerate that. So let the collective figure things out for themselves. Let them be obsessed with all this, you know, daily news and things like that. And let yourself be focused on what's to come, what you're building, who you are and your intuition. Okay, so I want to shift gears just a little bit because I get asked this question all the time. Is New Earth physical or an energetic place that we are going to? Um, and I want to say it's kind of both, but it's starting as energetic. It's a consciousness. Everything starts as consciousness. Everything starts, which is energy. Everything starts as an energy or a frequency. And then from there, we build it out. It becomes physical because we are putting our focus towards it. So with New Earth, I really feel like we are like at the, I know we've been on the bridge to it for a little while, but it's like we're at that final step. We're stepping on into New Earth. And that comes with when we finally dive into that water and start trusting our intuition more. And that becomes the leading energy. So, New Earth is a conscious place first. It's a consciousness. It exists within us. New Earth exists inside of us and we give birth to it through our ideas, through our wisdom, through everything, through making videos and sharing them with people. It, then people get to create from that consciousness. So we have to rise up into that consciousness, which a lot of us already have, and operate from that space. This current earth got created from a consciousness, from a third dimensional consciousness. And that's what we see and witness every day. So when we start creating from a fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, whatever, 
a fifth dimensional consciousness, we're going to create a fifth dimensional world. So this is where it gets kind of like kooky, I guess. My guides were showing me that just like we do all of this work on ourselves, we dive in, we go into this inner world and we shed these layers of ourselves. Um, you know, it's not like we're walking around our house and we see all these like carcasses of ourselves. You know what I mean? It's like the old versions of us, they just don't exist anymore in our reality. We've shed them. We don't resonate with these old versions of ourselves. Like me now doesn't resonate with the version of me when I was 27. It, it just, I'm a different person. And a lot of us have experienced that. And we've done this over and over and over again. And if you think about it in like a physical translation, it's like we're pushing out this higher version of us from inside of us. And it's like we shed this other part of us and we move into this stronger thing. It's like Superman when he <laughs> rips his suit off and then underneath you see like a Superman suit in his cape. And it's like, whoa, it's like, that's what we do. The earth is doing that too. She's going through this process of shedding and pushing out this uh, higher version of her. And I would call that the new earth, but it's energetic, just like it happens with us. We're not like seeing old carcasses of us just like laying around. That's not what's happening. It's an energy that has just kind of gone and it's gone back to, you know, whatever timeline it's supposed to be on, or it's it's gone to, you know, back into the ethers to rejuvenate and integrate and whatever. But um, it's like the earth is doing the same thing. And they were showing me that the energy of new earth is going, has already started like pushing out of the current earth. So I think I've demonstrated this before, but it's kind of like, um, she's like, if this is like, current earth and then this is like the inner earth that's been like doing all this work on herself it's like she's pushing out and you the energy is right there and it's kind of like this is where we're at right now so a lot of us are like on this part of the earth because it's energetic it's consciousness and eventually she's going to pull herself all the way out and there's going to be like this um let me see if i can use this pen it's kind of like this it's like there's this cord to the other earth until a lot of these other people awaken and cross over to this one and then it gets like separated and they're going to separate. And again, this is just, and it's energetic. It's energetic. Okay. Until we make it physical, we're the ones that are creating new earth. So it's not like we're going to die like they have in the Bible. Like people are going to die and rise up and go to this other place. That's not what it is. We're going through an ascension in the body. It is an energetic conscious ascension inside of a physical body. That might be a hard concept to grasp, but that's what it is. And it's like, as this earth pushes out more, again, it's energy, energy. This is an energetic form. It's going to cause these ripples on, I guess, old earth is what we'll call it. So they're showing me that the earth is going to push up through an ocean. They were making me feel like the Pacific. Um, and it's like, because that's where like the consciousness, uh, there's something about that area where it's like the consciousness might be a little higher or it was. I mean, I know that's where like Lemuria was too, but like it's going to push up through that area. And it's like this split, this opening. Again, it's energetic. And like, as this energy pushes out and, and we go with it, um, they're making me feel like there's going to be stuff that happens on Earth, like um, flooding, uh, earthquakes, things like that. And, and I feel like on the, the some of the coasts, but if you think about it, if the let's say the Earth was supposed to splitting open, it kind of just like everything tilts a certain way. So like certain areas are going to experience flooding I feel like and it, and when that happens they're saying that's because new earth is like fully popping out and energetically separating from this old earth so in a way it's like a good thing but also like not great because you know I don't want people to like lose their homes and, and things like that but um they are saying that that is going to happen but it's like 
if you think about too, in your spiritual process, your awakening, when you have had like huge openings for yourself, it, it almost feels like an earthquake inside of your body or you're getting flooded with like light or understanding inside of you and you can feel yourself like breaking out of these old chains and old ways of being. It's like that's what the earth is doing too. And she's kind of waiting for enough energy to come through to be able to pull herself out of this and like take us with her energetically. It's all energetic. Okay. So the earth is shedding itself and pushing up through the water. And I feel like that water also like gives a cleansing as she pushes out. It's not an overnight thing. They're saying this is going to happen over the next several years. Um, so it feels like it's already started. And it feels like once these like fifth waivers start to really open, it's like this is when it's really going to accelerate. Um, if you're new to my videos and haven't heard about the waves of ascension, um, those are in my earlier ones. So um, we're hitting the fifth wave now. Okay. Now, the other thing they're telling me is that this will also coincide with the solar flash. I also don't feel like the solar flash is like this one big moment where it's like all of a sudden the whole planet is filled with light for like 20 minutes. You know what I mean? It's like, I don't think it's like that. I think this is also a thing that happens over a period of time. Whether that's months or years, they haven't told me that, but I feel like it does feel like a period of time. And they're making me feel like it could happen as soon as November, like that's possible, but it's not like a guarantee. But they're saying like it, it, it needs, we need to have enough people at a certain point and a certain frequency and the earth needs to be at a certain frequency to hold the light that's going to come in. It's really potent. Um, if you've ever done like any activations for yourself or, you know, if we've felt these solar flares and you're just like exhausted the next day or for a few days, that's a lot. So imagine if a solar flash came in right now, how it would like knock us out. We have to be able to hold the energy that's coming in. So we need to keep doing our own inner work, keep following our intuition and raising our consciousness and frequency because that it's kind of like we're calling in the solar flash a bit. So that's why I feel like they're not giving me a particular date because we're, in a way, I feel like we're kind of deciding when it's going to happen as a collective. So we have to be able to hold that within our bodies. And so does the earth. And then the people who haven't awakened yet, they're getting particles from it. They're getting pieces of it. But it's like if they were to hold all of that energy from the solar flash too, like it might throw their body into shock or some of them may not make it through it like they could pass so it feels like we have to hold a lot of it and we're holding that light for the rest of the people and then we disperse it to the rest of the planet so that they can access it so man we've just got like big jobs you know it's like i feel like we really signed up for something here um but i feel like all of this kind of coincides together they're making me feel like the pushing out of the earth and stepping fully into the new earth and creating it um, into the physical coincides with the solar flash. It's also helping, that's also helping with this. So it's all working together. So I feel like this precipice of change is helping us to prepare for the birthing of the energetic new earth and this solar flash we're building up to it. It's gonna open all of this cellular memory inside of us. And we're, we're starting to do that now with our intention, with our focus, with not paying attention to this outer world and all of the mumbo jumbo they want us to dive into. We're taking off the blinders and the rose colored glasses, if that makes sense. We're gonna stop looking at the world of like, this false sense of positivity, I, this might sound contradictory, but it's like we're remembering who we are. It's not this road color glasses of like, oh, the world is 
going to work itself out and this needs to happen in order for everything to be hunky-dory. It's like, no, we're doing that. We are creating this ourselves. You want this like rose-colored world? Go create it. Go be the fullness and the power of who you are. You know, this, the word like light worker, I'm like, man, that's a badass word. Like, <laughs> it just feels like this power to it. Like, let's go be it. And I know we're stepping into this place too, where I've been told like we're becoming heart workers now. We're working with the heart to create. And then the light comes in and we're holding that and we're building that out as well. So it's just, we're just at a really important time. And I think these next several months, it's going to push us to make sure we are staying focused. We are honoring the possibility within us. So I just want to remind you guys that this is a process. This isn't something that's going to happen overnight. But the more that we can focus on our gifts in who we are, start trusting our intuition and following it and diving into that, the easier it gets, the quicker it happens, the more we're not going to worry about when is the flash coming? Who's going to get elected? When is this going to be disclosed? Blah, 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 blah. It won't matter. We know it's going to happen, but it's like when we focus on, okay, I'm, I'm doing my job. I'm doing my part of what I agreed to come here and do, and I'm fulfilled by it. I'm going into my heart each day, and I'm meditating and asking, what do you want? What do you need today? How can I step forward? And we're operating from that space. <sighs> Everything changes. Everything starts to change. And imagine if there are millions of us operating from that space, how the world changes too. So... Really start focusing on this possibility of what's to come and not what's here and how you don't like it and how things need to change. Be the change. You are the change. We are the precipice. Let's start dipping over on the other side of this threshold through this eclipse doorway and start pulling through the full grand possibility of what lies ahead of us and what we get to create. I hope to see you guys on Monday, September 30th. Again, the link is below if you would like to join for the uh, channel message and meditation. I hope you're all doing awesome. Take care of yourselves. Don't forget to rest, meditate, find that balance, take that action. It's time. It's time to really start diving into why our soul is here. We're on the precipice of making everything change for the better. Talk to you soon. Do you feel, feel, do you feel the light, do you feel the light, light, do you feel the light coming, do you feel the light, do you feel the light, light, do you feel the light coming?